This is the Insta360 Go 2. Chase Adventure. All right. My name's Jake and I test and review drones, cameras, lenses, other filmmaking equipment here in Alaska. I give you tips and tutorials on how you can use that equipment so that you can make smart buying decisions and tell better stories. Now Insta360 sent me this camera but they don't get any input on this video. They're not paying for this review and they don't get to see this video before it put out, it's put out there. So just full disclosure, that's what the deal is. Uh, when they sent it to me, they just said test it out, try it out, see what you think. And if you like it, put a video out about it. And I gotta say, I do like it. It does have some shortcomings, but it also is a interesting and useful tool, uh, which we'll jump into here in a bit. But for now, let's talk about the specs because I guess, you know, everybody wants to know what the specs are. So it will shoot up to 1440p, which is bigger than HD, but not quite obviously 4K, up to 30 frames a second. It will shoot HD video. It will shoot HDR video. It will shoot also uh, slow motion in HD up to 120 frames a second, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, it'll shoot photos and it uses something called Pure Shot, which produces a pretty decent raw image that you can edit later in post, which is pretty nice. And it will also create time lapses and hyperlapses, which they call time shift. And uh, that's actually pretty cool. It comes with this charging case here, which uh, I really like. It way more than I thought I would. The fact that you can cycle through, you push when you open it up, the camera turns on automatically, you push a button and it starts connecting to the camera, and then you can use this white button to cycle through all of the modes, you can cycle through all the settings, you can start and stop recording, basically all right here. And this, while the camera has a built-in battery and 32 gigabytes of memory, which is nice, I wish it had 64, but you know, whatever. Um, and it, it works on its own up to about 30, maybe 40 minutes, depending on how you're using it. The case will recharge the camera several times over, so you get a lot more shooting time with the case, which is nice. The other thing that's kind of nice about the case, it has a quarter 20 on the bottom, and it has these little tripod feet, so you can set it on a table, pop it out, and do something like that. And then if you want to edit with the Insta360 One Desktop Studio app, you've got the USB-C here to be able to pull the info off the camera and also obviously recharge the case and the camera at the same time. So for the strengths, I think this is a great POV camera, doing things like what you saw in the opening montage of me running up this mountainside, because it's so small, it's so light, it's really easy to put on you. It comes with three mounts. It comes with this mount here, which you like put around your neck and hang under your shirt, and then you can just snap the camera to it because it's magnetic. Or it comes with this, which is meant to like attached to a hat brim or to a, a backpack strap, which is what most of the way I used it. Uh, I really, really like this mount. Actually, it's my favorite and they're all magnetic. Um, I thought about trying this on the drone, but I was a little bit worried about because it's just magnetic and it's not super strong magnets. Uh, I was a little bit worried about the camera actually staying in there when I started doing some harder moves, but this mount is my favorite. And then there's another mount that's on my car that you, it's kind of a sticky material. You get it wet and it sticks to glass or other smooth surfaces that I use for the hyperlapse and stuff like that. It's uh, pretty nice. I wish I actually ordered a 3D printed version, um, but I wish they gave you a mount that worked with GoPro. Um, type mounts because I have a lot of GoPro type mounts that would be pretty nice or if the camera had a, a mount you know like this that just had a some sort of quarter 20 built in the bottom that would also be useful but you can always adapt stuff but then it does add bulk and stuff like that but going on to the strengths I was actually impressed the image quality is pretty good for being such a small camera in such a tiny case the image quality does good and 
the while the regular video just sort of has not great stabilization if you use the pro video mode it has the flow state stabilization which is tremendous i mean you can even turn the camera 360 degrees and it will keep the horizon perfectly level which is really cool and since the camera is waterproof you don't have to worry about it being out in the weather in the rain or anything like that because it's waterproof now you can remove these little lens caps and you want to make sure you get them tight so that it keeps its waterproofness but it does work well. So the microphone quality in this is okay, especially if you get it out of a case. But as soon as you get wind, it's not the best because it just it just can't handle wind well. And that's not surprising. It's a tiny camera and the microphone's right at the top. But like I said, the image quality is decent. It's not bad, especially if you're in bright light. This is not a low light camera. It just won't work well in low light, but it does work well in bright light in spaces like this out in places like this because it has you know it's a tiny sensor and bright pixels are happier pixels is what we used to, if that's still a thing people say but the smaller the pixels the brighter the light the better they look and honestly insta360 has come a long way since the first camera they released their image quality is getting better their colors are getting better i actually really like the colors that are coming out of this overall they're pretty nice and uh, one of the nice things is, too, that you can use their studio app or the app on your phone to edit and tweak all these videos. You can choose between, you know, wide field of view all the way down to narrow field of view, depending on the sort of look you want to go for. I, for the most part, for POV stuff, I use wide a lot. And because this camera is so small, it really shows off the tiny little spaces it can fit in. But you might want to use narrow and you have that option. There are a couple of things that really bug me about this, though. And one is the fact that the record light, we, since the dawn of time, mankind has used a red light for recording to let people know that things are recording. Insta360 decided on blue. I don't know why. And it really has thrown me for a loop a lot. Like I, I, I'm like, is it recording? Is it, is it not recording? Maybe it is recording. I can't really tell. It's really hard to tell. And so I wish that was a red record light. Oh well, it's not, no big deal. Uh, the other downside is it only has 32 gigabytes of storage built in and there's no way to change that. There's, so once that storage is full, it's full. You have to offload that footage on your computer, onto your phone, and then you know format and start again. I wish there had been 64 or 128 gigabyte option. The, the only other thing that I really don't care for that much is the sound quality. And I'm not surprised, like I didn't expect great sound quality but I do wish that it was just a little bit better. It would be nice. And uh, you know, if they made like a foam cover for this, you could get away with a lot more in a lot more harsh conditions, wind and stuff without losing the audio quality that you do have on this little camera. That's about it. So if you go into using a camera like this, knowing what its limitations are, you can use it for some really great stuff like what i showed you on the way up here you can get some really cool pov shots which are yeah i i just never did it much because i hated the look of a giant gopro on me and it was just you know the chest harness and all that and with this it's much easier to just strap to my backpack straps stick on my hat and get some pov shots of me doing stuff so i am excited to use it in that way the other thing that makes me excited about this camera is being able to stick it in tiny little spaces that you can't put any other camera just because it is so small and you can use it in any orientation. So it's a really useful camera for stuff like that. And the other use case scenario is, that I'm really, really excited about is FPV drones. Now I fly a lot of different kinds of FPV drones. I have little ones that I strip down GoPros to where it's just the sensor and the circuit board. So they're about 30 grams. This is about 26 grams by itself. And then I fly really big FPV drones with cinema cameras like Red Komodos and other cinema cameras on them. And what I'm really excited to use this for is putting it on the back of one of my big FPV drones and being able to capture behind the scenes footage, the POV shot with the whole drone, the camera in there flying through an area. Now I haven't been able to attach it yet because I'm waiting on a couple of parts and pieces. As soon as I do, I will throw some of those clips out there on Instagram and you might see them in a future video on YouTube. That is something that I really, I really am excited about this camera for is being able to put this on things that you can't put a GoPro on because it's just too heavy. Whereas this is so small, it doesn't really change the aerodynamics and it's so light, it doesn't really change the weight too much of the drone, but you can still capture decent quality video of those things. Now, if you wanna know how this stacks up or other action cameras stack up against each other, click or tap there. I put together a small playlist. I'll see you in one of those videos. 
As always, if you have questions, ask me in the comments below or join my live stream Wednesday nights at 4 p.m. Alaska time, 8 p.m. Eastern. I just have a few thousand feet to climb down and a couple of miles to get home. I'll see you again soon in the next video. Cheers.